Someone's calling me. Oh, when it's hot, it doesn't want to fit. The nice thing about making mistakes and iterating quickly is that you can learn from your mistakes and hopefully come up with something better. Now, if you've watched some of my previous videos, you'll see or you'll know where we are right now. We've got a fixer plate, we've got a die gone wrong, and then we had a punch gone wrong. And hopefully today, I mean, you'll find out with me, uh, we have a solution to where everything is going to work together uh, as intended. In the last video, for all intents and purposes, the die worked fine. One problem that I ran into was I, I did have a, a collection area underneath this die to catch the slugs. However, it was isolated and the slugs were blocked because this was surface mounted to this surface plate. I had mentioned that perhaps I should anneal this and create a pathway or mill some kind of pathway underneath here. Instead, I took an easier route and I made these two uh, spacers. These are something that I modeled up in Fusion 360. In fact, why don't we head over to Fusion 360 onto the computer and I'll show you, you know, from start to finish how I have um, planned and adapted to this project. Here is the project um, as it stands right now. I've got my fixture plate, these spacers, the die, and this punch. All right, now, obviously it didn't, it didn't start this way. If I turn some of these off, you'll see this is, this is basically what I started with. I knew the, the dimensions of the old rusty piece of metal that I had, and I modeled it here and then used this program, Fusion 360, to say, you know, what, what do I want? Where do I want my, my bolt holes? Where do, I, where do I want everything? And this is how I, I modeled this space. Now I knew I wanted uh, the die to be here. I knew I wanted to put the fixture place on the fly press and I wanted to use the existing T-slot. So that's when I modeled in these. And then I have some other accessories where that I intend to use these holes to, to mount. And maybe, maybe we'll show that in a future video. So this is kind of where I started my fixture plate. All right. And then I, I added the, the die. So here we, here we have the die and you'll notice the die, the holes line up here and here. Okay. I modeled in these eight millimeter threaded holes for my accessories and those stripper clips or whatnot. And then I modeled in this slot, this receiving slot for the punch that I had that I thought would work. And then underneath, as we just discussed, whoop, if I can drive here, as underneath, as we discussed, here's this little void or recess to collect the, the slugs, which was an utter failure. And then this is a pass-through hole that I thought that I would use, and it worked to realign the part to get a new work coordinate system in my CNC mill, all right, so that I could do my, my uh, bottom operation. I did the top and then I did the bottom after. To fix the problem of the slugs piling up in here, instead of modifying the existing die, I decided to do these supports. And they are simply, you know, they, they match this with about a, mil, a millimeter of play to match this die. And that is all they do. Okay. So they, they pocket, they hold that die in place nice and tight. And then they mimic the holes from that uh, die to allow me to tighten this up to the, the fixture plate. And I think that worked out well. We haven't practiced it yet, but I think I don't, I don't see any problems. 
And then the last project that I just finished yesterday took me all day, really, between you know my other workout here in the shop, to heat treat that dye, and then to you know to harden it and then temper it. That's a whole day affair for H13 if you if you're doing it, you know, by the recipe that's recommended for that steel in the heat treat oven. Quite an interesting process. And then so here is that dye. And if we just look at that, or sorry, that punch, I seem to say these words interchangeably, but no, this is a punch. This is not a die. And this is the design that I came up with based off of the first comment that I got in my video where I had my, oh crap fail, where the, my old die got stuck. The very first comment he said, why don't you, or she, I guess it could be, why don't you mimic, uh, model that off of a iron worker die? And so I did a, a you know a quick search, and this is this seems to be the the general pattern. You know they had this center mark here, and then if I turn this die back on, you'll see that it actually clears. It will clear. It, it will it will clear the the slug by that much and still not interfere with this shoulder now i have to be very mindful on the fly press and maybe i'll show you this there's there it, you know i can still go too far unless i set that stop as uh, up on top underneath the flywheel to literally force stop this you know it could potentially engage with this die again and it can go too far and I'll do my best to not let that happen. Now back to back to real life. Let's take a look at, at the die and where we are now and what we're going to do the rest of this video. And here's the, the finished punch. And it should look a lot like it did in Fusion 360. Okay, this was milled in my in my CNC mill, my Silex Seven. In my very last video, it's titled uh, "Raw Footage," I believe, in the thumbnail. Uh, you can see how I came up with this blank with the stop collar here, and then in. Uh, with the stop collar here, it involves some welding, which isn't the easiest to do with, with H13, but I found with three previous punches I've done that this is sufficient and works pretty well. The milling in the sile went, went pretty well. It, it was protruding from the vise a little bit, um, but still I didn't get um, any chatter. Uh, I was pretty conservative on my feeds and speeds the whole operation actually didn't even take that long. Um, instead of, you know, trying to make it perfect in the mill, I got the, the general shape of it and then finished it, polished it up, deburred it outside of the mill. I find for blacksmithing work that that's a good compromise. So as you can see here, it's quite dark. There's a little bit of a, of a polish on, on the end here where I, I did a uh, hardness test. Right now we're at, a, we're at, again, about 50 Rockwell, just below 50 Rockwell C. Um, I did a, a double temper on this, and I found with H13 that it's very, very important that you do a double temper. Um, my first temper was at 1,000 degrees for two hours, and then I did a second temper at 950 degrees for two hours um, and you know unless you've I, I, you know I don't have a degree in metallurgy I did take a semester of it in college it was fascinating a lot of, of reading and I'm finally putting some of that knowledge to, to use or at least it's making sense as I pr 
practice hardening and, and heat treating and whatnot. The, the ramping and equalizing and hardening took about two hours and then the other two, two hour time. So really it took about six to eight hours for me to, to, for the process I used to get to this state right now. Now that does leave you with quite a bit of carburization and I actually did forget about this. So this might, this is probably going to be a little undersized because I did mill it to size. Okay. The OD of this is the OD I want for this receiver and the OD for this die is the OD I want, sorry, for this punch is the OID, OD I want for this die. I have to, I'm going to clean up this carp, this carburization now um, off camera. I'll get it nice and shiny like this and, you know, I'll lose a little bit. Probably not that critical. Now I will say that I've had a lot more luck now this goes for H13 only. I've had a lot more luck for the, the work that I have forged uh, the traditional way that I've really forged and, and promoted that grain pattern. I get a lot stronger punch. Whereas this, this is milled. You know what? This might not work. I give it a, I give it a 60, 40 chance that this is going to work. 40% chance that this is going to fail. I'm going to chip an edge. Um, this is going to mushroom. It didn't really harden, you know, I'm not an expert at this. I am a lifelong, again, lifelong military veteran who after retirement has turned his turned to playing out in my shop and learning these things. So it's a win-win. This will either fail or it'll work. Either way, I will win and drive on. All right. So enough of, <laughs> enough of my excuses. I'm going to heat it up, make it nice and shiny, put it in the fly press, heat up some metal. Let's see if this thing will punch. All right, this is the 3 16 one inch wide flat bar. I'm gonna punch both sides, see how it goes. Oh, Jesus, that was easy. Okay, there's one. And slugs through. Okay, that felt like it So we'll, let's do the other side. I'm gonna put a little punch lube on this because I have it. Okay, it looks super crisp still. That's one. I mean, probably it'll, even if this were, were mild steel, it'd take a while. So it's gonna, let's do another one. All right, test number two. Place it in there, center it, and well, punch, one and done. It just sliced through one time. You see that? That was easy. Now, oh yeah, slug came through. So you'll notice that I've put it back to my original. I don't want to fiddle with this thing and tighten it. It's just too much. I'm a freehand guy. You know, I don't even care if it's not on center. I like the challenge of being able to work it out on the anvil. Um, too much of this tech and setting it up and fixturing perfectly just takes some of the fun out of it, the creativity out of it. So, well, for this, this is a success. Let's, let's see here. Let me push, push these slugs out. There's one. Oh, there's two. Can you see those? Two slugs. So verdict, the spacers work, the spacer supports, the new die, 
works. Doesn't have the tapered shoulder as the old die. It doesn't, and it doesn't get bound up. I've got this, this collar stop set so that it will, the, the shoulder won't impact. And I've chosen this handle hole to where I am done. When I'm here, I'm done punching most of the punch. So I know not, I mean, there's no mechanical leverage to continue. Okay, so I'm not ramming this stop into there. Now I did play with this, the idea of taking some of this, uh, this rubber and throwing it on here, uh, but eh, I don't think I need it. Wasn't a big fan. It, it sort of works, but it's kind of sort of squishy too. Kind of like, kind of like, uh, you know, rolling around in a waterbed. It's just too squishy and unwieldy. Well, once again, thanks for tuning in. I think I have something to work with here that works well. Onwards and upwards. Cheers.